Kent claimed victory on day three after a vintage Darren Stevens spell ripped through the Gloucestershire batting lineup. Kent resumed on day three on 118 for four, an overall lead of 267 with Gidman and Harris the not out batsman. Harris added just nine to his overnight score before he was dismissed off the last ball of Norwell's second over for 13. Norwell then proceeded to take two wickets in three balls in his next over, first dislodging the off stump of Stevens for a second ball duck, and then having Rouse caught in the slips also for a second ball duck. Kent suddenly 134 for seven, and Norwell with morning figures of three for nine. That wicket brought Treadwell together with Gidman, and the pair began to build a partnership, although not without a bit of luck. Gidman appeared unperturbed by the introduction of spin, nonchalantly reverse sweeping Van Buren's first delivery to the boundary. Treadwell, however, was fortunate to survive after a strong LBW shout from Van Buren was turned down. The pair continued to progress, with Gidman bringing up his half century shortly before the break, Kent going to lunch on 194 for seven. Taylor came out firing for the visitors after the interval, taking two wickets in the first three balls after the restart. Gidman was the first to go, bowled around his legs for 51. Coles was then following him back to the shed for a second ball duck, trapped in front, playing across the line. With Kent nine down and Treadwell and Claydon deciding to throw caution to the wind, they added a quick fire 52 for the last wicket in just 6.4 overs. Kent's innings was finally ended on 246 when Claydon holed out to Norwell off Liddell for 16. Treadwell unbeaten on 47. Gloucestershire faced the daunting task of reaching 396 for victory, but few could have predicted what was to come. Bancroft was bowled through the gate in the third over for two. Dent followed next over shouldering arms to Stevens. Taveray edged behind three balls later to be out for four and Hankings followed him to the pavilion the next ball, caught by Gidman off Harris for a golden duck. Gloucestershire were 14 for four, and the nightmare continued in the next over when Mustard nicked off to Stevens for a duck. The carnage wasn't over though, and in the next Stevens over, Van Buren was the second man to be bowled shouldering arms, out for three, Gloucestershire in the scarcely believable position of 18 for six. Miles was the next man to be dismissed without scoring, playing down the wrong line to become Stevens' fourth victim, and Stevens claimed his fifth in his next over, Payne caught by Bell Drummond for six, Gloucestershire 36 for eight. Taylor was the ninth man out as Stevens claimed wickets in six consecutive overs to leave Gloucestershire on the brink of defeat, and Clayton had a chance to wrap up the match with a catch of his own bowling, but the chance went begging. However, a 24-run 10th wicket partnership and the match was ended when Norwell skied another, keeper Rouse making no mistake this time. It was a batting card that would make painful reading for Gloucestershire fans, with Taylor and Norwell the only batsmen to reach double figures and the top six contributing just 13 runs between them. An outstanding bowling performance from Kent, spearheaded by veteran Darren Stevens, who at nearly 41 years of age proved he is still capable of producing a devastating spell of seam bowling. Kent take 21 points from the match to get their season off to an excellent start, whilst Gloucestershire will be looking to improve when they host Leicestershire in round two.